Spider-Man, Spider-Man Does whatever a spider does Spins a web any size No he can't, he's a pig Sorry, we're not that good at rhyme Hyper? Benny? Thought I told you guys to get ready for Spider Month. Oh, we are, darling. Yeah, we're ready to mock the hell out of those Sam Raimi movies. Awesome, I think. Wait, I thought you guys loved the Raimi movies. I mean, I've made fun of them for years, but you two have always defended them. That's one of the reasons I brought you in, to get a different point of view. Oh, that's when we were children, darling. Little babies. Oh. Yeah, we've grown a lot since then. As you can tell by our grow-upping demeanor. Oh, really? So now you see them as silly movies? Oh, of course, darling. The Raimi films are ridiculous. Laughably ridiculous. That's so funny. I've been saying that for years, and everybody's been looking at me like I was crazy. They are awful. Simply the worst kind of awful. Well, I don't know if I go that far. Now that we have real Spider-Man movies. As well as real comic book movies in general. We've been enlightened with age, and now we see them for the shit that they really are. I wouldn't call them shit. What are you talking about? You've mocked them more than anyone, darling. I know, but I guess I've always had a bit of a soft spot for them. Yes! Are you saying you actually like those baby movies? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, I don't know. Compared to the millions of other comic book movies we have now, they are kind of unique. Looks like he's one of those man-children that can't let go of his happy memories. <laughs> hey, there is good money to be made with that. I mean, I was telling you guys these movies were silly. You obviously haven't matured like we have. Come, dear. Let us venture to where the adults are. Joke's on you. You're on the internet. A mental fountain of youth. Nobody grows up here! really gonna end up defending these movies. There's an interesting backlash that's been going on with the Sam Raimi films as well as the Mark Webb films. In honor of Spider Month, we're gonna look at both of these series, but for now, let's start with the Sam Raimi movies. In the past, they were mostly well received, gaining praise from critics and audiences, and even hailed as trailblazing groundbreakers. With the release of even bigger fan favorites though, like the MCU Spider-Man films and even the Oscar winning Into the Spider-Verse, many are looking back at these and seeing them as, well, corny. It's a Norman Rockwell type of superhero light, goofy, and living in a romanticized universe. No playing in the streets. Yes, Mr. Spider-Man. Don't get me wrong, the first two Superman movies do the same thing and they're hailed as some of the best comic book films ever made. But how do I put this? If Superman is the murder in Mississippi of Norman Rockwell's work, Spider-Man is the after the prom of Norman Rockwell's work. The Supermans could get really intense, morally difficult, and epically powerful. Kids could watch them, but they were mostly for adults. The Spider-Mans were occasionally emotional, but leaned more towards non-threatening imagery and ideas. I still have no idea why this movie is PG-13. Was it this look? Cover your children's eyes! The Spider-Man comics could be goofy too, but they didn't shy away from dark choices and heavy themes. Treated with as much seriousness as possible. These... Are you in, or are you out? It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. Do seem to be more kid-focused, don't they? But with all that said, this is a very unique universe I don't see much in comic book movies. There's tons of films like Batman, there's tons of films like Iron Man, but with Spider-Man? Nobody really talks like they talk here. Nobody really acts like how these characters act. Nobody lives in such a friendly yet odd environment. It's like if Pleasantville had pumpkin bombs right down to Tobey Maguire's in both of them. But the question remains, does that make these good films or bad films? Ah, like you even have to ask, darling. You know, I think I can handle this without you adults, so piss off! Come, darling. Let us snort our way out of here. <laughs> The best way to figure this out is to look at all the films in order, beginning with the original Spider-Man. In production hell for years, Spider-Man was handed from creator to creator trying to bring it to the big screen, with one of the biggest names being James Cameron. But like most things he holds off on, he just kind of gave it to someone else. After proving he could make continuous good movies with a strange, dark edge to them, Sam Raimi was finally given the reins for the project, being a gigantic Spider-Man fan himself. Now keep in mind, comic book movies were mostly seen as box office poison at the time. So this was a bit of a risk. However, there was a holy trinity in the late 90s and early 2000s that changed people's minds. Blade, X-Men, and this. 
This very clearly was the biggest hit out of all of them, and many claim got the ball rolling for comic book movies to be the cinematic empire they are now. So this film is owed a lot of things. But, as we asked before, does it still hold up 18 years after it came out? And can the people who grew up with it still find appreciation in its... bizarreness? Well, I imagine that might be harder for some than others. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Spider-Man. After the opening credits to the Spider-Man video game... No, really, tell me you couldn't see this in there. Help! Please! I'm going to die! We get a narration from Peter Parker, played with mild disinterest by Tobey Maguire. Who am I? You sure you want to know? The story of my life is not for the faint of heart. Let it be known the third line of this movie has faint of heart used unironically. If you're really surprised by anything awkward that follows, you can't say they didn't warn you. We see Parker chasing the school bus as it appears he's so geeky, even geeks won't let him sit next to them. Mm -mm. Don't even think about it. God, it's like a POV cam from when I was in high school. I mean, uh, let's look at my yearbook picture again. They go on a field trip with a pretty fucking weird teacher, even as these movies go. You were talking throughout that woman's entire presentation. What is going on? Let's go talk about how we listen. The next person who talks will fail this course. I kid you not. Daniel, how many times have I told you students can't teach the class? Peter's best friend Harry, played by James Franco, is dropped off by his controlling father, Norman Osborn, played by Willem Dafoe, playing Christopher Walken. Somebody there? Who is this? I can't. What? I started this. I'll make a few calls. How come I never see these two in the same room? Goblish Moblin, this is the real villain alter ego story! I just don't know who's supposed to be the villain and who's supposed to be the normal one. Your parents must be very proud. I think he wants to adopt you. <laughs> They're taken to a lab where genetically designed super spiders, and yes, that is the scientific term. Genetically designed super spiders. We try to name our species by what looks good on a B movie poster. As Peter continues to be picked on. For the school paper? Mm -hmm. Well, that helps me. My article's on logs. Uh, Peter tries hitting on Mary Jane, played by Kirsten Dunst, asking if he can take her picture. I need one with a student in it. Don't make me look ugly. That's impossible. <gasps> Now, for a long time, I didn't really get what Mary Jane was about, as she was just sort of written as... nice. I think Dunst had the same issue, because she looks like she has no idea what to do with this character, aside from being... nice. When I read more Spider-Man comics, though, I found she's supposed to be more of an energized extrovert. Kind of like Rogue from X-Men, or Andrea Beaumont from Mask of the Phantasm, or... Honestly, Kirsten Dunst from Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. So she can clearly play this role of someone that has a tough life, but puts that energy into being super active and positive. Here, we got the tough life part down, but every scene it looks like she's praying, nay, pleading for direction about what her character is supposed to be, as she's running out of ways of just being... NICE! Terry, relax. You'll think I'm a stupid little girl with a crush. I'd like a cheeseburger. No, I, I guess not. You are amazing. I'm in love with somebody else. I want to act. Somebody, please. There's only so long I can smile like a sitcom wife who's dead inside. While taking her picture, Peter gets bitten by an escaped spider. Subtle. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, at Oscorp, Norman is showing the military his new glider technology. <laughs> Complete with Krang's body. But it's Oscorp's other experiments that pique the military's interest. Human performance enhancers. We tried vapor inhalation with rodent subjects. What were the side effects? Violence, aggression, and insanity. Okay, screw the rest of the movie. I want to see what an insane mouse looks like. Does it do cartwheels? Does it eat its own hand? Why watch these goofballs when we could be seeing this the whole time? You are the syphilis uh, to everything I've worked so hard for, you miserable, poisonous sack of disease. But brain! Shut it, bitch! Uh. The military tells Oscorp if they can't produce successful human trials or non-crazy rats, they're going to give funding to another company. Meanwhile, Peter makes it home to his Aunt May and Uncle Ben, feeling the effects of the spider bite. You won't have a bite? No, thanks. Had a bite. What's that all about? Maybe our wallpaper's making him sick again. Why did we go at VeggieTales' funeral? Peter begins to transform, as that seems to be the pattern tonight, with Norman using himself as the human trial. We'll have lost the contract to Quest, and Oscorp will be dead. Get me the Promochloroparazine. We will perfect the ultimate mouthwash. 
dick. He's exposed to all his farts from the lighthouse, causing him to go insane, killing his partner. Meanwhile, Peter, through spider science, seems to wake up cool. Oh, creepy boy with his room window staring right at his high school crush. I think those hands were hairy and wet long before that spider ever bit him. Hey, Michelangelo, don't forget we're painting the kitchen right after school, got it? Don't start without me. And don't start up with me. Hey, I don't have a prayer to survive this film, do I? No, dear. At school, Peter discovers he has amazing abilities, and Mary Jane discovers she can't even have lunch without having to be rescued. Now, apparently this wasn't CGI, and it took 156 takes to finally get this right. But I don't know, if that were true, I think the reaction would be less this. Wow. And more this. <sighs> 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 That was pure luck! I was not in control of that situation at all! <laughs> he continues to go through spider puberty as he can't talk to girls while goose pews out of him, and things get messy without having any control. Uh, kids, if you're gonna have children, they're the best kind to have. Peter leaves school and discovers even more abilities on the rooftops. To those wondering if these hideous effects look good back then, Lord of the Rings The Two Towers came out the exact same year. These effects were awful! But don't worry, as the film goes on, they get... These effects were awful! Up, up, and away, web! Peter tries summoning his web again, but can't seem to recreate it. Fly! Shazam! Go, web, go! Maybe if I think of banging Mary Jane... There we go! I like where he lands on the ad, similar to how a bug would land on a windshield. But the fun stops when he realizes he forgot to get home in time to paint the kitchen. Uh, Uncle Ben's drunk again. Oh. It looks like Mary Jane's father is yelling at her, which might be why this awkward romantic scene comes across like two six-year-olds acting in a school play. You can just see what's coming. And what for me? You're gonna line up Broadway. You're taller than you look. I hunch. Don't. Honey, what are you doing? I'm writing the Spider-Man movie. Well, stop hunching over. You're going to ruin your posture. Just let me work. Great. I wrote that into the script. Who cares? Nobody's going to listen to the romance in Spider-Man. But whatever you want, as long as there's nice music. I guess that's true. I'm going to go back to helping George Lucas write the Star Wars prequels. Hey! How many times have I told you not to track sand in the house? It's coarse. Peter decides to look for ways to get money to buy a car to impress Mary Jane. He notices an ad for amateur wrestlers, because the paper's printing Craigslist now. And he asks Uncle Ben if he can drop him off, saying he's gonna study at the library. Now we all know this scene, Uncle Ben says with great power, yada yada yada. Peter blows him off and he's gonna regret it. But honestly, I would have liked a little more friction between them as Peter kind of bites his head off out of nowhere. It's not like there was a falling out between them earlier on. He just kind of acts mean for the sake of acting mean. I'll figure it out. Stop lecturing me, please. I know I'm not your father. Then stop pretending to be. Or at least tell me where my father is. Never. He knows what he did even if I forgot. God damn you, Uncle Ben. He goes to the wrestling ring. Wait, wrestling is real in this universe? Now I know this isn't reality. As he applies to fight. Hey, I thought Octavius wasn't in this. Down the hall to the ramp. May God be with you. Don't forget to try my pie. It's shit. The Amazing Spider-Man! The announcer sends Peter into the ring to fight a wrestler named Bonesaw. And I'm not gonna lie, seeing Randy Savage, Bruce Campbell, and Octavia Spencer seconds apart in a wrestling ring kinda makes me think there's a god. Randomness like that has to be planned. Hey, it's how the internet reacted when they heard Maguire was cast in the role. Don't worry, a treasure trove of memes shall be thine reward. Bonesaw's gonna eat you up and Actually, this is the most attention I've gotten from women, thank you. Hey, Freak Joe, you're going nowhere. I got you for three minutes of playtime. Can I bring up it's been over nine years since he passed and I still miss the shit out of this guy? Snap into a Spider-Man! <laughs> After honestly, a really great action sequence, probably my favorite in the movie, which is a weird problem, but we'll get to that. Peter doesn't get all his money because he defeated him too early. 
I need that money. I missed the part where that's my problem. Ooh, another possible reason this was PG-13. Avert your eyes! It's as much skin as the Little Mermaid shows! The manager gets mugged, though, running past Peter, who gets out of his way. Thanks! What the hell's the matter with you? You let him go! Well, as a security guard, we always advise kids to stop armed men. Idiot! You could have taken that guy apart. I missed the part where that's my problem. Peter discovers, though, that Uncle Ben's car has been stolen and he was shot in the process. Uncle Ben? Oh my god, you've been shot! I missed the part where that's my problem. <laughs> Finish painting the kitchen. Uncle Ben dies, unleashing his spider rage. Let's see, what'd he tell me again? I wasn't listening. With great power comes great vengeance. Lots of vengeance. Good advice, Uncle Ben! So the effects here are pretty hit and miss, with sometimes them looking pretty smooth, and other times looking like the 90s cartoon with five pairs of sunglasses on. thing is, a lot of this sequence is hard to see, but the part you're supposed to not see, the carjacker's face, is clearly shown in a number of different shots. Ow! Oh my god, it's you! I only had 12 opportunities to notice that! Thank god for that flashback! Who has time to remember minutes ago?! You know what I love about heroes that don't kill? Bad guys always conveniently trip to their deaths around them. I had a partner, by the way, and I'm important. Can you believe about Uncle Ben? I know Aunt May, he's dead. No, I meant we're out of Uncle Ben Rice. Where's my husband? Meanwhile, a nearby base is testing their vibrator grasshopper when Norman crashes the party. <laughs> that seems how a general would react. No duck and cover or locate any weapons. Just tell my wife I died not screaming like my wife. Got to everybody graduating as Norman seems to be happier for Peter than he is for his own son. I know this has been a difficult time for you. Excuse me, I have a tumor to fill with this pent-up aggression. If you ever need anything, just give me a call. You're like a brother to Harry. That makes you family. You're like a brother I wish my son had. Minus my son. Spontaneously cut to Peter crying. Trust me, you'll get used to that. As he admits he was thinking about Uncle Ben. Get used to that too. You were meant for great things. You won't disappoint him. Unless you give a really weak entrance by awkwardly walking by papers barely showing your mask when you had an epic World Trade Center intro from the teaser ready to go. Yeah, Batman shows his wings, Superman flies, Spider-Man judges you like you ate his McGriddle. Spider epic! Yeah, this scene from the teaser was clearly meant to start this montage off, but it was cut due to 9-11. They have a second of it in there, but it's played so fast without the original build-up that if you blink, you miss it. It's super weak, allowing us to focus on how kind of weird a lot of these New Yorkers are. Even by New Yorker standards. He stinks, and I don't like it. Ah, some kind of freaky Lewis something. whack a do. whack a do, Taking yous in the thirst bucket to the stoop to get the pie! Get a load of this! <laughs> What, were Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable robbing a place? Guy with eight hands. Sounds hot. I am 100% digging this Xena reboot. The blonde looks great. He has those tights and that tight little... Whoa, watch it. This is a PG-13. You can't say... Backside. Excuse me, darling, but it seems like you find this movie rather ridiculous. Well, yeah, I never said it wasn't, but I am still... Invested enough? Oh yeah, that's a quote for the movie. Spider-Man, I was invested enough. You know, you're making my job of praising a movie I said was overpraised very difficult. Well, well that's what happens when you're a grown-up. I will prove to you there is something beneficial here for adults. You do that, while we continue being adults. Uh, come, darling, let's use our free time discussing how there's no free time. Oh, that's very adult. Rather! People need to die younger. Hey, you can see us at Midwest Gaming Classic in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, April 3rd to the 5th. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch, Monday through Saturday. Playing a lot of games, telling a lot of jokes, and having a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. So the one over-the-top element everyone can seem to get behind in these movies is J.K. Simmons as J. Jonas Jameson. 
He's the fast-talking head of the Daily Bugle, and despite him really having no reason to hate Spider-Man, he does it so well, I don't think anybody cares. Tomorrow morning, Spider-Man, page one, with a decent picture this time. Move Conway to page seven. There's a problem with page seven. I make it page eight and give him 10% off. Okay. I make it 5%. That can't be done. Get out of here! How's this for a story? Kids today don't even know what newspapers are! Peter bumps into Mary Jane and discovers she's dating Harry. But Harry hasn't brought this up to Peter despite them living together. Hey Pete, you're probably looking for a job. Dad, maybe you can help him out. Oh! <laughs> no, I, I appreciate it. Peter discovers he could get a job taking pictures of Spider-Man, so he sets up cameras hoping a crime will conveniently happen in front of them. So, you're Spider-Man. Maybe 300. That's a standard freelance fee. Peter takes the check to Betty, played by Elizabeth Banks, who welcomes him to the Daily Bugle. Welcome to the Daily Bugle. Thank you. My wig has a good feeling about you, but it's also advising me to direct Charlie's Angels. At Oscorp, Norman seems to be top of the world, sending the business to new heights. So of course he's fired. You're out, Norman. Norman tries getting revenge at a Raise Awareness for Better Balloon Effects festival, starring 2002's most 2002 performer, Macy Gray. Why didn't you wear the black dress? Just, I wanted to impress my father. He loves black. Well, maybe he'll be impressed no matter what. Twitter's gonna freak if they see you wearing that! James Franco's audition to play Tommy Wiseau in three, two. Oh, hi, Mr. Fargus. Norman finally reveals himself to the world as the Green Goblin, and... It's just as dumb looking as you remember it. Hello, my dear. Now, I'm not gonna pretend this is an easy character to bring into a three-dimensional world, but look at these other concepts. When you see what we could have gotten, it hits you even more how Pez dispensary he looks. Things don't get much better when Spider-Man arrives. I mean, they do, just not in the way I think the movie intends. This action sequence, after not having watched it for years, is one of the craziest goddamn things I've ever seen. Just look at this as an adult, with the weird imagery, shitty effects, and over-the-top acting, and tell me this isn't a drunken Power Ranger battle. Everything about it is totally insane! Look at this kid. Did he get high before coming there? What kind of expression is that? Why doesn't his mom just grab him? He's right there! Is that balloon moving backwards the fuck? Why does this girl act like she's in a Mentos commercial? It's Spider-Man! The Fresh Maker. Impressive! What, talking without your lips moving? <laughs> that fucker's dead. Jesus, that looks awful. Did we even get a shot of Spider-Man standing up seeing the goblin coming towards him? We just cut to him running like a stunt show. Did they fast forward Mary Jane? What are they doing? Jesus, that looks awful. What? Kill me again, did he just pull a- I'll get you next time, Gadget. Is that a dummy or did he die in midair? Why was it hard to get a person in a spider suit to hold her? Don't mind us, she just needs to use the elevator. Ha uh ha? -huh. So as you can see, this entire action sequence is completely nuts. But because of that, it's kind of amazing. I give it three and a half little WTFs. Yay. Norman begins realizing he may have a split personality. At least that's what the voice in his head is telling him. This is scene chewing at its yummiest. So many good things all happening for you, all for you. I'm beginning to think you hate glass more than Spider-Man. Is this like your number one fear? Bringing you what you've always wanted. There's only one who can stop us. <laughs> moment you realize he was actually underperforming when he played Nosferatu. Norman goes to the Daily Bugle to find Spider-Man's photographer. Jameson, <gasps> you slime! Slime? Oh, chalk that up to another reason this would PG-13! Who's the photographer who takes the pictures of Spider-Man? I don't know who he is, his stuff comes in the mail! You're lying! I swear! So Jameson's willing to put his life on the line for Parker? That's like Bluto sticking his neck out for Popeye. It's possible, but you gotta explain it. Spider-Man appears, but Goblin has a way to knock him out. Oh, I do hope it's a silly way. Sleep. <laughs> I love it when it hits you that the main villain of your movie just made a Humphrey the Bear sound effect. <laughs> Goblin paralyzes Spider-Man and offers him a chance to join Goblin in... Being crazy! 
You and I are not so different. I'm not like you. Eventually, they will hate you. Why bother? Because it's right. And other cliche lines from the 40s. Why doesn't he take his mask off? I mean, he tells him to think about his offer, but why doesn't he just take Spider-Man's mask off to see who he is? I could take your mask off right now. I know, but don't. But I want to. I don't want you to. But I could. But you won't. Why? Chicken thigh. Well, I guess you got me there! After that, we get, ooh, another scene where Peter and Mary just talk. I do hope it feels more like status updates than actual conversation. How's it going with you? Why so interested? I'm not. You're not? Well, why would I be? I don't know. Why would you be? I don't know. What the hell are you even talking about? I'm not. You're not? Well, why would I be? Why would you be? You're so beautiful. It's only because I'm so in love. No, it's because I'm so in love with you. Mary Jane has to be rescued again, this time from kissy faces. Ooh, I saw a hoodlum do that in West Side Story. And I've never seen anyone do that. But Peter changes into Spider-Man to save her. You have a knack for saving my life. I think I have a superhero stalker. Who talks like that? You know, Peter, she doesn't know you're Spider-Man. There's no red flags that she's cheating on her boyfriend with a pajamaed criminal while also kind of playing the field with you. This is why all you got was a hug in Spider-Man 3. The next day we continue our pattern of parents who are awful as a mother leaves her baby in a burning building. <laughs> yep, Spider-Man's gonna die in a burning building with a baby. This movie suddenly got super dark on a whim. Well... That was suspenseful. They hear another woman screaming inside, only to discover it's the goblin. What about my generous proposal? Are you in or are you out? It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. That line's like a pendulum. The more it repeats, the more you die a little. They fight in the fire with Spider-Man getting his arm injured, but both of them flee, just in time for turkey. Yeah, I'm tired of nobody putting this on their favorite Thanksgiving specials. Norman, will you do the honors? Spider-Man, where even sampling sweet potatoes is somehow made weird. Norman notices Peter's wound and immediately figures out he's Spider-Man. Shocking, he kept it a secret so well. Something has come to my attention. And just when you think this movie can't be any more, what? What do I do? Instruct him in the matters of loss. <laughs> but how? The cunning warrior attacks neither body nor mind. I just recently saw David Lynch interrogate a monkey. This is weirder. Can you imagine somebody walking in on this supposed intimidating scene and not laughing their ass off? Hey Rob, I wanted to get your input on- What must I do? Nope, I have to look again. This leads to, believe it or not, an even crazier ass scene when he crashes in on a praying Aunt May. Oh my god! You can't see anything like this in another comic book movie. It is so precisely odd. I want to see him do this for other things that people should wrap up. Beelzebub has a devil put aside for me. Finish it! For me! Finish it! For me! <laughs> She's sent to the hospital where... Oh, yes! Peter and Mary Jane remain perfectly still in one spot talking again! You know, there's other romantic things you can do! Go to the fair, walk on the beach, not say things in such a creepy ass manner. You feel excited, and at the same time, terrified. Call the police. Harry sees Mary Jane flirting with Peter though, and goes to tell his daddy. I haven't always been there for you, have I? I've lost sight of that somewhere, but I gotta make it up to you, Harry. 
I'm going to rectify certain inequities. Good to have you back, Dad. This wasn't cryptic at all. Ah! Wake up, little spider. Wake up. Eek. Peter wakes up from his terrifying dream, as it seems Aunt May is doing better. You do too much. You're not Superman, you know. <laughs> well, I'd have to get a lot better at breaking necks. You know, you were about six years old when MJ's family moved in. You grabbed me and said, Aunt May? Aunt May? Is that an angel? I really don't like how many parallels this has to the prequels. Aunt May says everyone knows he's in love with Mary Jane, which gets him thinking he should give her a call. Hi. Hey, MJ. I need to know if you're an angel. Hello? <laughs> MJ, you're finally laughing at my jokes. It looks like the goblin has kidnapped Mary Jane as well as a car full of kids. You can tell they were saving the really good effects for the climax here. Same year as Gollum! This is why only fools are heroes. Ah! Spider-Man shows up as Goblin forces him to choose between Mary Jane or the children. Now, anyone who knows the comics knows this is a send-up to when the Green Goblin killed Gwen Stacy on the Brooklyn Bridge. One of the most shocking deaths in comic book history. But here? Eh, we're just gonna do the Batman for everything. Cause you know, if you're gonna steal from Batman, might as well be the best one. It's not that they don't kill Mary Jane, I honestly don't think that would have worked here. It's that there's no point in doing it like this if you're not going to deliver the goods. It'd be like telling the story of Jesus. He heals people, gets to the trial, and then he's found innocent and goes home. There's kind of some big epic stuff you're leaving out. Oh yeah, did I mention this was made right after 9-11? Leave Spider-Man alone! You gotta pick on a guy trying to save a bunch of kids! You mess with me! You mess with New York! You mess with one of us! You mess with all of us! God bless ya, your heart's in the right place. <laughs> Spider-Man saves Mary Jane and the kids, but the goblin grabs him and takes him to, honestly, the second best fight in the movie. Again, I think that's because there's not a lot of half-ass CGI and it feels more gritty and grounded. It's even one of the few times the goblin's mask looks pretty cool. As you can see, Defoe's much scarier teeth inside the fake teeth, giving it a nice creepy vibe. <laughs> As you'd imagine, Spider-Man finds his strength and ends up beating the Goblin, just as he reveals his identity. Give me your hand. I've been like a father to you. You know, a father that tries to kill everything you know and love? A Hollywood father. I have a father. His name was Ben Parker. Yeah, and I'm Ray Skywalker. We really are who we choose to be, aren't we? He accidentally nails himself and his goblins as he makes one last request to Peter. Don't tell Harry. Well, I guess you did try to kill my girlfriend and Aunt May and me. You know, fuck you, I'm telling Harry. No, I guess he keeps his dumb scouts on her and returns Norman home where Harry finds him. I'm so sorry, Harry. I swear on my father's grave, Spider-Man will pay. You know, the word on the street is the X-Men did this. That Dazzler's a real psycho. Well, here we are at the funeral of our best friend's father. Wanna go out? There's something I've been wanting to tell you. When I was up there, there was only one person who I was thinking of. The person I've stood still and talked five times having the most boring of conversations with! It's love! Dull, monotonous love! I love you so much, Peter. But Peter, in order to keep her safe, turns down her advances. Because that's totally how it's always gonna be, guys. I will always be your friend. Only your friend? That's all I have to give. <laughs> Whatever life holds in store for me, I will never forget these words. Bros before hoes. With great power comes great responsibility. He swings towards an amazingly convincing American flag that totally wasn't put in at the last minute. And that's the end of Spider-Man. It certainly is. Uh, so, Critic, with all the jokes and mockery you made of this movie, has anything changed for you since you last saw it? <sighs> yeah, but... It hasn't just changed for me, it's changed for you, too. Oh yeah? What's that? Comic book movies. You see, back then there weren't that many, and I was waiting for the equivalent of The Dark Knight to come out, something that took comic book films super seriously. Instead, I got this, something silly, over the top, and mostly innocent. So I always kind of resented it, thinking we could get a much more serious Spider-Man movie. But now that we have films like The Dark Knight and even more serious Spider-Man movies, I can finally enjoy how one-of-a-kind this series is. But it's so ridiculous!
ridiculous. Yeah, everything in it is so campy and goofball. But that's part of the fun. Its cons are also its pros. If you don't take it that seriously and just embrace the hilariously sugar-coated world, it is kind of fun. It's paced well, it's a decently laid out origin story, and its angles and imagery are very old school comic book. I know it takes liberties, but if you compare it to the liberties other comic book movies took at the time, this one actually stayed closer than others. And yes, this was the movie that arguably made the biggest impact in getting comic book films going again. And for that to be an innocent, gentle, cornball flick instead of an extreme, dark, hardcore bloodfest, it's actually rather impressive. It's funny, a lot of younger people that grew up with this find themselves disliking it as they get older, but since I watched it with a more cynical mind and the cinematic environment around me has changed, I actually find myself enjoying it. If I focus on the passion and creativity rather than the details. I think this movie's gonna have a different reaction with different ages at different times. And you know what? If it broadens your point of view, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, there it is. Yes, there it is. So, do we like this movie or not? Well, I guess the little kid in me is always going to like it, and the adult in me is always going to find problems with it, darling. And the good news is, there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever you feel towards a movie is okay to feel. Well, I guess we were trying to grow up a bit too fast. Oh, come on, Benny, let's put on our Spider-Man pajamas and watch the Raimi films again. With alcohol. Oh yeah, of course with alcohol. We have to enjoy some perks of adulthood. There's nothing even in these goddamn things. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and whether sober or plastered, Spider Month is just beginning! <laughs>
and I have over 25 years of experience working with young people. All the work we can do means nothing if you can't transform the community that you're sending them back into. What we don't do is turn youth away. We work with the youth that pretty much get kicked out of school. We work with the youth that are referred by the juvenile justice system. We work with youth who are not just at risk, but they're in gangs, and we work to get them detached from gangs. And through intensive mentoring, many of our staff were former participants. And so we try to carry it through, but it's through love, it's through a commitment, it's through a focus of taking our young people, bringing them from where they are, bring them where they need to be. If people want to volunteer or they want to donate to the site or give any kind of support, I want you to look in the camera. I want you to say where they can go online. BuildChicago.org. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you so much.